Welcome to today's edition of the Youth Show. We're going to have a series of discussions and a few little activities, but first of all, we're going to go over to our team tour, which today comes from Fazib. Zibanwa. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> anything that's on my plate. Sleeping, eating, uh, and watching TV. They all are, really. Me. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's got these abs. Um, get the planning for outside, get the wall up. Um, get, <clears throat> get more people involved into, into the center, into the, into the organization. And uh, for me to take a step back. Uh, problem I'm still solving. I've heard people talk about me, but it's not. Um, I'm gonna be guessing Fassel. Easy, Fassel. Zab said to him, but I disagree. Um, so I'm gonna probably say me again. Me. Uh, Probably Fassel. I've heard as I've heard as his name being mentioned. Um, I'll probably have to go with Fassel again. AK probably. Thanks for that, Fazib. Now over to Amir, our table tennis coach, who once was UK number one at under 21's level when he was only 13. So let's go over to Amir now, who's going to do a table tennis session with some of the kids and also the table tennis Jarhad challenge. So to hold it back, you just, you just need to one finger across the back, okay? And on the other side, the thumb needs to go on the other side. Okay, and you're it's quite close to the uh, racket as well, yeah? Okay, so to do a backhand, all you need to do is, this is a backhand and this is a forehand. To do a backhand, you just need to, from your stomach, you just need to do this motion here. Right. From here, this is the angle, obviously because the bat is not, it's not great, so you, you got to open it a little bit and just go like this. Okay. To do a forehand, uh, it's very similar, it's just it's an open action. So you, do, you start from here, your elbow tucked in a little bit, and then you just do this. You end up in front of you, not here, just in front of you here. So action. Okay? So what I'm going to do, if you just uh, do a backhand, and I'm going to put it on your forehand as well. If it goes to your forehand, all you need to do is move your foot slightly, yeah? Move your foot slightly, so you're, you're doing backhand, suddenly you go to your forehand. What you do, you move your foot slightly and you go like this. What, do your forehand? Yeah, to do a forehand. This is a forehand. Okay, so are you doing backhand? Someone just plays it to your forehand. You need to change your foot footwork. Yeah, so you just stand slightly. So the right foot goes in uh, behind the left foot. And then you just do your shot as normal. And then when the backhand, if it comes back to your backhand, just do the same, uh, move your foot slightly forward, your right foot, and then do this. Okay, we're just going to give that a try, yeah? yeah? So I'm going to do one backhand and then one forehand. Move your foot. That's it. Move your foot. So we're going to do your forehand, you're going to put it here, yeah? So like you can put it in back here. Very good. So you need to move your footwork a little bit. Adjust your footwork. Adjust. That's it, very good. See how I'm doing it? I'm moving here, I'm moving here, I'm, full, I'm moving where the ball's going, yeah? And the right footwork as well, you have to shift over like this, like this. 
Yeah, obviously when the ball comes quicker, you have to be a lot quicker. Yeah. Your standing position needs to be square like this. Square. So your, your, your body needs to be like this when you're doing backhand. Okay, like this. When you're doing forehand, slightly, slightly bent. No, 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 the other side. Your right foot. Bend over a little bit, a little bit, that's it, and then you do it for one. Yeah? Okay, so, how do you do a backhand? Straight. straight, slightly straight, yeah? Okay, when you do a forehand, you turn like this, and you do this. Okay? What we're doing here, um, the community centre and stuff like that, you can do more, more of that stuff and uh, get kids involved in uh, table tennis and stuff like that, yeah? That, so, would, that would help. So, youth centres like this running, you know, schemes like this, it's going to allow children to at least improve. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And uh, if you, you know, if you have the facilities for them, like t table tennis tables and, you know, good rackets and stuff like that, yeah, they would definitely improve. And you're speaking about good rackets there. How expensive is it, say, is a good racket to get from, say, sport, you know, one of the sports shops? From the sports shop, if you, I mean, 20 pounds, all, all you need is, like, spins on the actual bat, not just the wood, and you get, um, you know, uh, pimples coming out of it. Those are really cheap ones. You get, you get them for one pound. Oh, excellent. So if you get, you know, um, rubbers for f the, um, 20 pounds, 15 pounds with decent spin on it, it's good. And in terms of uh, giving back, it's, it must be nice to be able to help out the kids a little bit. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels great. <laughs> feels great, yeah. Great little session there. We're now going to go over to Bilal, who's going to present the Jar Ad Challenge. This challenge is a standard, it's a standard game of table tennis. First up to 11 points between Jono and Ahad. Whoever gets to 11 first will take the point for this week. Let's begin. First up to 11 with Ahad 7 first. And that's Joyno's point, so 1 0 to Joyno. Ahad 7 now. Ahad 7. It's 5 1. That's 6 1 to Joyno. Come back there. That's 7 1. Joyno, yes, sir. Table tennis is my weak point. What can I say? Um, you all know had the better hand. Um, oh, or better hands. But, but better hands, because I've got chubbier hands than him, and he's, you know, he bats a bit like. So light. you think your fat fingers <clears throat> got in the way? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, he's skinny, so you can just um, slightly bat left and right for his fingers. So that's what obstructed me from winning. Um, but I think I have the next round on point. Football? Do you think you've got the, you've got the techers for that? Yes, some people call me the next Michael Owen if he still exists, but um, we'll see. Yes. Table tennis seems to be your event. Feeling good right now. You know, Ahad was too busy looking at his nails because he just had them manicured. That's what let him down. You know? so, so, well, to be fair though, in the, in the other events, the manicure seems to have worked. Uh, it's not working for him anymore. Them so, girly fingers. Now, he actually, it seems that he fancies the next event, football. What do you think? <laughs> football. This guy don't know what football is. Really? 
Yeah, he has no clue. He has no clue what's going to hit him. So you think you've got this one in the bag? I've got it in the bag, definitely. 100%. He ain't got no chance. He's got two left feet. Well, it's, it's more than some people. We need to invest to keep our youth's feet firmly on the ground. Our young kids really need a beneficial playground. Just give five pounds. And you can do it easy from a text message right now. Text GIME 50 space five pounds to 70070. Or be the one and make the dream a reality. Welcome back guys, now we're going to look a little bit about community cohesion now, so we're going to have a bit of a talk between Meet Your Muslim Neighbours and also a group of youths. Assalamu alaikum, today's topic is community cohesion and how the youth of today can play a positive role in the community they live in. I've got three guests here today, I've got Moaz, Gamal and Yasin. welcome guys. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I'll start off with asking one of you guys, um, when we say community cohesion, what does that mean to you? Well, for me, I would say community cohesion is when different members of society integrate with one another. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like to add on to that. So, they don't, they don't have to be from the same racial background okay. or religion. Mm -hmm. So they're mostly from different sure. backgrounds and religions, and they interact okay. with each other. Yeah. So that's what uh -huh. cohesion is to me. Okay, and Yasin, yeah. it's What's like when the that? community comes together and does things together to create a better harmony and peace within themselves. How do you think that's, why do you think integration is important? Well, I think it's important because it develops you as a character and as a person. Uh -huh. So let's say you're around the same sort of people most of your life. Yeah. When you um, widen out a bit, when you get a job, you have to travel, you have to go meet new people. Sure. You might find it a bit difficult to get along. You might find it hard to adapt to uh -huh. the way different people are. So that's why I think it's important. Okay, and that's a very good point you mentioned there on how, to, how you can, it's in a way you're expanding your life skills as well yeah. by being able to speak to different people and that. Okay, um, and in communities you have, currently obviously in the communities that you, we all live in here, you have a lot of go gangs and you know, gang culture. Um, why do you think kids from say 16, 17, even younger possibly, join gangs? Maybe because they don't feel stable just in their family, they want to get a bit more stability mm -hmm. and join like their own probably age groups mm -hmm. or you know the same cultural uh -huh. um, feelings that they have uh -huh. and they want to do that within the particular groups they go into like as in the gangs okay. and you know that builds a reputation for them, it builds a name for themselves as well like they might be shy quiet people but then when they join the gang yeah. they feel that they're, in, they're superior to others. Okay. Oh, yeah. And adding to Yasin point, uh, Yasin's point, you could say it's a form of acceptance. Okay. So yeah. within a gang, it's like a family. Uh -huh. So when you're together, you feel accepted. Where otherwise, if you're somewhere else, you might not feel as though you're important. Yeah. yeah so okay. I think um, when teens are growing up, they go through quite a hard time. So they might think their parents don't understand them well, uh -huh. or the teachers are not understanding what they're going through. Okay. That's why they turn to people of their own age, so they can they relate with each other. So uh -huh. in that sense, that's why I think they form close bonds and okay. they stay in them gangs. How do you keep yourself away from that sort of environment? I mean, I, I can only presume the peer pressure is, is quite a lot if you, all your friends are either in a gang or, or they're doing all these so-called great things, you know, with their gang mates and that. How do you guys keep yourself away from that sort of environment? Yeah, um, personally for me, I have a lot of support from my family and I have a lot of uncles and aunts and cousins that okay. I see them quite a lot. So for me, family, I've played a big part in me keeping away from mm -hmm. um, gangs and gang violence but okay. I don't think that's the case for everybody. I, I think it also Wasn't depends it? on like the friends that you have as well. Okay. Obviously like I've got Kamar so I know he's not doing anything dodgy <laughs> so then he keeps me on track I'll keep him on track and it's like that it's like who you're with basically yeah. like creates what kind of person you want to become. Okay, so, so. I, you both mentioned points that it's either your family or it's your friends that can help you stay away from gangs. Um, with regards to youth organisations now, obviously you've got a lot of gang culture and so forth and we have youth organisations um, such as Rhythm Ourselves as well who work with kids who have either been in gangs or have recently left gangs. What do you think youth organisations can do for people in gangs or people in, in, a, in a negative environment? 
How do you think they can I help? I think it's um, good for them because it brings them all together in a positive environment uh-huh. rather than bringing them together in a negative environment, okay. which is the gang. Yeah. So we're sort of like the opposite to, uh-huh. instead of being out in gangs, so yeah. it just it brings everyone together, whether you're black, you're white, you're Asian, yeah. whether you're from different religions. It's just a place where everyone can meet up and get along. And it also supports them if they're not getting support okay, from right, Okay, and just finally, on, I'd like to add on a point on, that you mentioned about you know being part of Kuku like, What do you guys do to integrate with others? Um, well, I mean, I know you mentioned earlier that you yeah. guys actually go and you know speak to different people and, and try and integrate, but is there anything else that you guys do that helps you integrate with people? Well, um, I'm quite, like, I like playing sports quite a okay. lot, so mm-hmm. whether it's tennis, whether it's football, whether there's a lot of people coming, so yeah. um, let's say I call a few of my friends that I know and I'll ask them to bring some of their friends and okay. they can bring some of their friends. Right. So th- we're not all from the same background, so then mm. once we meet up, we play football together, we, we talk yeah. to each other okay. and then we might exchange numbers and email addresses and yeah. um, talk to each other online and then okay. we build <coughs> relationships like that. Mm. Okay, guys, well thank you very much for your time. Some of the points you made are very good points and it's good to hear youth like yourselves having good positive thoughts about gang culture and obviously trying to integrate with the wider community. So thank you very much for your time. I've got a very special guest. I've got Sakib on today um, from Meet Your Muslim Neighbours. Um, Sakib, how are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, mashallah well. It's a really nice day out there. So yeah. alhamdulillah. Good. Um, could I just ask you briefly about what Meet Your Muslim Neighbours are all about and what, what, what you guys do? Okay, um, Meet Your Muslim Neighbours is now coming up to its 10th year. Okay. So um, next year will be 10 years into the organisation. Um, It was born from the idea that uh, within the Muslim community we need to have uh, an engagement with the wider community Mm -hmm. and uh, that engagement will foster strong relationships with the Muslim community and other people and the objective of that engagement is that it gives those people who might might not be Muslim an opportunity to learn about Islam from people that they live with. So if you think about London or possibly any other city here in the UK you've got a sizable Muslim community there yeah. and uh, you've got people who are Muslims living next to people who are not Muslims mm-hmm. so hence you've got meet your Muslim neighbours right? right? so you've got the idea that these Muslims will then engage with their community mm-hmm. um, most of the engagement takes place through what we call open days okay. so within their local you could say a centre like you've got here at the Rhythm Centre or it might be a mosque or a community centre you'd have people organise themselves into a group mm-hmm and they'd invite people in to learn about what Muslims are all about and that's okay. Meet Your Muslim Neighbours in a nutshell. Right, okay, um, so when you say invite people in, yeah. how, how do they invite them in? I mean, do you just actually go, to, well to use a better phrase, door knocking onto your local community or do you have like a, do you, do you go out to other faith-based organisations or how, how do you invite people into one of your events? Okay, well um, let me talk about some examples that have happened. Yeah, that might be. Okay, right. so. Um, uh, St Ives for example, what they've done is that they've approached the local schools and they've done their open days within the schools. Right. So they've had a lot of school groups there who've um, come, this is part of their school, and then they might get primary schools come in as well to the secondary mm-hmm. school and uh, they'd set up over there what might look be an exhibition. Uh, the important thing is that they've got to have Muslims there who they can talk to, so people from the school, the children, the teachers, possibly parents, anybody in the community will be able to talk to the, the Muslims there about what Islam is all about and uh, what Muslims in that community are bringing to that community. Um, another different approach was done in uh, Manchester and Liverpool, okay. where within Manchester Museum and Liverpool Museum, um, the group of brothers there and sisters have approached the museum and they've had their open day and on one whole floor of the museum. So now coming up um, well, pro- probably in the next couple of weeks, I think uh, maybe in Ramadan, in fact, um, you've got a Meet Your Muslim Neighbours event happening in Liverpool Museum, okay. and it's going to be a big event. The last one they had was uh, attended by over 7,000 people, and that's advertised even through the museum. Wow, so absolutely. the museum would advertise that, that we're doing an event mm-hmm. where people can learn about the Muslim community and uh, their heritage within our museum. Uh, we've done a few at the Idea Store in Whitechapel, so okay. at different libraries. Yeah. Um, and uh, the most common one are the ones that are d- done at the mosque. Right, okay. So within the mosque you'd have uh, a group of o- the organisers mm-hmm. would organise a day and they might leaflet the local people 
Um, other different ways are putting up posters right. or okay. just having someone stand up outside like with a sandwich board yeah, or something, yeah. something similar to that. And just directing people to the open day mm. where people can go, come in, just walk off the street and yeah. say, look, have you ever been inside a mosque before? Right. It's your opportunity to come in and have yeah. a look. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, what you find is that a lot of mosques haven't done that enough so a lot of people in the local area yeah. would say well I've never been in here before okay and it gives them an opportunity to come in I mean I think that's a very very good idea um, and obviously you guys have been running for 10 years but I think it's very important in the current climate mm. on people understanding what your Muslim neighbors are all about absolutely um, and obviously people understanding a little bit more about Islam as well so I think you know it's a, it's a really good initiative that you guys have got there with regards to some of your initiatives and program that you guys have done mm. um, I understand you've recently done an event with Rhythm Community Centre as well, That's one right. of your projects. Yeah. Um, can you just expand a little bit about that and tell us about how that went? So what we did with the Rhythm Community Centre is that we had um, an opportunity to work with their youth from uh, primary school age to the lower secondary school age okay. and put together at the centre a Meet Your Muslim Neighbours event, Okay, so an open day. And one of the main things from that was that it, we, we gave the youth the independence of uh, building their own resources okay. on what they wanted people to learn about um, Islam. Yeah. And uh, gave them the independence in organising, so if, if you think about the different parts of an event, you'll have the hosts, mm -hmm. people will talk to yeah. people about Islam, you'd have the catering, uh, you'd have those people who are the reception team that might be receiving people yeah. in. So being able to organise themselves as a team, effectively participating together on that, and uh, they put a, a fantastic thing together. Okay. okay so uh, the the event, so you could say uh, the project was fantastic. Some of them felt really proud that they were able to talk to their their peers yeah. about Islam, take them around and host them, give them food. That's good. And it was something that they're going to have with them for the rest of their lives. Now they've done this, you know. Okay. So these are our next generation. Okay, no, that's really good, Mashallah. Thank you, Zab. No, no, no problem. Just, just a quick one, if people want to read more about your, your organisation, you've got a website address to give to the viewers at home? Okay, so uh, the website address that we've got is www.mymn.org.uk. Make sure you go there, check it out, um, all the different ways to contact us. And if you want to get involved, then of course, get in touch with us and we can help you set up something in your local area. Okay. Um, Jazakallah for that, Sakib. Really a pleasure to have you on to the show today. Barakallah for um, you. What I will say, thank you very much everybody for watching. You've all been a great audience. A couple of great discussions there. Our final segment of the show is the advice piece, which comes from Sheldon, a previous gang member. The most important thing I want people to take from today is that people need to understand that there's no point in trying to lose your identity to try and fit into somebody else's shoes. The most important thing is to go out there into your community and reclaim the lost brothers. Because right now, you have got too many lost brothers in your community who are claiming to be Muslims and out there selling drugs and, and, and doing all kinds of nasty things. To me, the most important thing is that people need to understand the reason why you became a Muslim, the reason why you were born into being a Muslim was a reason. And the reason is, is that they, it, um, Allah wants you to live a righteous life. Now, this is me as a Christian telling you that. The reason why I'm telling you that is this. I have seen too many Christian brothers go down the same road, and that road is materialism. Materialism has no place in our life. And I'm saying this to the Muslim brothers out there. Material goods, Nike, and all these nice stuff does not have a place in your life. So I'm saying this to any outreach person, any person that deals with youth centers, any person that deals with youth clubs. If you want to change your city, your environment, your Muslim brothers, then go out and reclaim that lost generation now. Once again, guys, thanks for joining us today and watching another episode of The Youth Show. Until next time, I've been Marcus, and I'll see you soon.